Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I'd like to invite everyone to stand for the pledge to the flag, please. Uh, welcome everyone to the September 20th meeting. Not on our plate today. Okay, minutes of September 6th. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of September 6th? We have a motion. Second. And a second. Any discussion on the minutes? Carried on all in favor? Aye. Motion carried. Financial report and payment of the bills. We have a motion to approve the financial report. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this at all? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. We have a budget amendment. Uh, Steve, would you like to read that? Uh, yes, uh, budget amendment number 2024-02. It is to um, budget $82,133 for the purchase of a grass and debris loader. This is to replace the one that was damaged in the accident from I believe it's June second, and uh, the funding source of that will be ARPA standard allowance of seventy four thousand six seventy eight, and insurance reimbursement that we got for the destruction of that equipment of eight thousand four hundred fifty five dollars. There was actually there was one in the current year budget that was approved, but then the, the backup of what ended up would have been backup was also destroyed. So. To give us a compliment if it's very good. Do we have a motion to approve budget amendments? Uh, 2024 20, 02. So moved. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion on this? No, it's uh, <clears throat> we're making a budget amendment already, and it was an accident. I'm glad everyone is okay today. Uh, and uh, this is a a uh, very important piece of equipment to the town. You know, one of the things that the, the town offers is uh, the grass and debris pickup at everyone's doorstep. And and uh, it's, a, it's a nice service that we offer that uh, um, if, if, if you mow your grass and you want to get rid of your, your clippings, we, we pick it up with this unit. If you uh, uh, have debris uh, uh, from, from your shrubbery, uh, we pick it up for you. Uh, I can say a, a lot of municipalities request you to uh, mulch your grass, and, and some uh, municipalities will actually uh, request it and take it uh, to the uh, landfill. But we do a good job of offering curbs. Who's they're coming to? What's that again? Who's they're coming? There we go. Uh, curbside pickup. So thank you. Uh, so any other discussion on this? I think their equipment is available to us, isn't it? Yes. So there's no lag time. So yeah, there won't be any lag time. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We have a presentation by Republic Services, uh, our new trash hauler, and uh, you're going to give us an overview of uh, the transition plan, I, I think, and, and the overall game plan here. This would be great. We don't get on the screen. We are, and I think I hit the right button. So just to uh, make everyone aware, we had three bidders on the new uh, town trash mm -hmm. service, uh, and uh, Republic was awarded the the bid, and. Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of uh, work ahead of us. Uh, there's a, a lot of changes in this transition plan and uh, they're gonna go over with us so we can all get on the same page. Well, we'll need you uh, folks to identify yourself for the record, please. Very good. Uh, Commissioner, Mayor, thanks for having us. I'm Tommy Cordier from Public Services. Uh, I'm a municipal manager. I'm accompanied by Jeff Jacobs, our general manager for the business unit, and Andre, who's our supervisor, who will be actually uh, facilitating the operations of the contract. Um, just to give you a little bit of information about uh, what we do and what we do, 
So my job in particular is to kind of facilitate contracts in the Delaware to the Maryland market place. Um, Jeff is the general manager. He, he runs, I think, three divisions in Delaware and Maryland and one in Brandywine. And then Andre is, is responsible for less than operations. I should be able to collect it as well. But, uh, our division manager, Joe Sheeks, is not in the future. Um, so just to put a little bit more uh, into this, we have about 2,000 contracts across the country, um, about 3,000 employees, um, and the fifth largest uh, patient group uh, in the country. It's the most use, um, dispensaries, uh, landfills, and things like that. Um, so we have a lot of resources to be able to use the tech company. Um, uh, I do want to say we're very honored to have been selected, and we're going to do our best to uh, make this transition as smooth as possible. So, so today, I'm just going to walk through what the, what the contract transition is going to look like, um, the service, and answer any questions that, that you guys have. So it begins on November 1st. Um, so the five things we wanted to roll through were the actual nuts and bolts of coordination plan of your contract, or details on that. Walk through the part delivery schedule and then take questions about that, um, as well as community education plans and some of those as well. Um, and then the daily communication we're going to do with the public service department. And at the end, just jump into the QA. So when you think about a contract and, and for the town of Elkin, there's a lot of detail that, that we need to be attending to. Um, so you're going to create your transition timeline for the town. Uh, plan for the public works department. Um, we're going to have weekly communication uh, with your teams in meetings like this. Uh, the phone calls are pretty much every day. Um, we're going to stage and roll out new containers uh, for all the residents, which we'll get into. Um, then we're in the, work, in, the, in the midst of hiring drivers for their trucks um, and commercial containers as well, as well as some helpers. Um, and then a different, again, the biggest piece is the community education for the residents, which is being developed as we speak. So, this is just a kind of screenshot of how we're keeping track of all the things that we need to do. Um, it lists the milestones, uh, just the different tasks necessary that we responsible for them, um, the completion, and things of that nature. It's just a kind of internal checklist. We're having meetings every Friday to make sure we're on point. Uh, as far as the containers, that's a reason a good question. Um, we're going to assemble and deliver them um, in town and we recommend uh, trucks. Um, the plan is to, to roll the containers out on uh, the 23rd. Um, and then we think that that should be done by the 27th. Um, we have an address that's been supplied to us from uh, the government, and that's so there will always be some adjustments to that, and we'll work through that during that time period. So it will be just a one-day operation. Getting everybody aware of what the new service is going to be, uh, we, we basically uh, come up with a uh, kind of three pronged approach. Um, we're going to bring in a third-party company to. Uh, and door to door informational hangers uh, the weekend of October 16th. Um, and that'll basically give the residents um, an update of what's going to be changing and how it's going to affect them. Um, just some key points there. So that'll be mid October. And then the containers will be delivered the week of the 23rd, as we spoke about. And with that, there'll be another information piece with the brand new containers. Um, that's pretty robust, and I'll show you an example in a second. Um, and then from there, um, we'll have an informational mailer available as needed, you know, as people um, request information like this, and we can mail it different information. Um, and then the, the kind of final piece of the puzzle is we're going to build out a white grid website uh, for the town of Elton. Um, so that's got frequently asked questions, scheduling, service details. Uh, we did that for. Uh, Town of Ellesmere, um, which I can show you, but I'll take some stuff for this. But basically, it'll be on your website, and if people need information about the trash, you can click on this, and it should all be there. 
So we think that's kind of comprehensive when we had pushed out this information, but it is going to take time. It's going to take um, everybody kind of speaking with a really final message. Um, this is an example of uh, another town where we developed some more data. Um, so, you know, it just describes the type of service when, when it's starting, the containers out of the year, just the details that kind of go into the contracts. The collection map, this is a hot item. The collection calendar, and the holidays, service tips, what can be recycled, things of that nature. So all that information will be on these um, pieces, as well as the website. We're going to have to constantly um, repeat that information. So after a while, it should, it should be pretty smooth. Uh, that's just an example. This is this is actually the information that we've gotten, but it's going to look very similar to this. So, if you have any thoughts on what you'd like to see on it, we're open to that. Um, we, we've been all here, and the studies are speaking, so I kind of feel it. And this will be the mailer. Yeah. This will be the mailer, and also this will be the part that will be attached to the new containers, probably, on that day. Yeah, so, so you have this little hanger that has information about service. You'll have a piece like this on the part, and you'll have a mailer that's very similar to this, just kind of repeating information. Um, and then you'll have, then you have something like Take you if they if they look if they were out of service. I mean, I I mean you up to that you have a photo there. We'll send you a picture of municipal building that we went on there. Sure, that would be great. Yeah. Okay, that would be good. Yeah, any kind of photography or kind of post wise, that's fine. So the the this type of manual will be in the field. Yes. Yeah. I think between the wind. It sticks out. So, but that's why we're going to do the door hanger. Yes, yeah, so on the door hanger, we'll say when the when part arrives, there'll be more information. Oh, yeah, that's a great point. Because typically, just so you know, on, on, on many times that would be all the residents would get is just that information with the part. But obviously, this is a bigger transition, and there's going to be some more new pieces. So, you want to kind of put certain lags on that. Also, if I if I mention, sure. uh, we also talked about in addition to all the information given to the residents, if the property owner doesn't live at the residence, I asked if the, the property owner could be advised to have the changes around the thing that have the changes. I think we're going to meet is it next week. Yeah, we're not. I'm totally not. Oh, the landlord. Mm -hmm. So we're meeting with the landlords on October 11th with the same presentation. Yeah, exactly. Um, so from here, um, we can talk through some of the questions that kind of came through from the that you guys had. Um, so I'll just kind of, kind of roll through them. So how will public education regarding the new trash and collection contract be conducted? So that's what we just talked about. That's 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 um, the next one, how will you set the proposed after ending the chapter? Yeah, so our standard operating procedure with that is to replace the cards exactly where they were put out. The only exception to that would be if they're put too close to a stationary object, a telephone pole, or something that could be damaged by our collection vehicles, we would actually move those. And again, that's something that would be on the educational information is that, hey, if your cart is put back somewhere other than where you put it out, uh, please put it out there for future collections. And certainly in the beginning, we can communicate with those residents. We can communicate back and forth with you guys. Again, we want to make this as easy as possible for the residents, therefore making it easy as possible for everybody in this room. Uh, make sure they get exactly what they need. But that's our, our general procedure is put the cards back exactly where they were, uh, unless it's unsafe for some reason. Does your collection unit ever use a sidearm thing? They will. Okay, yes, because other than, you have to have yeah. room for cars and stuff. Yeah. That is correct. And, and that's part of the flyer. It gives placement instructions yes. of where to place the carts and how to place the carts. And again, our drivers are very good at if there's something that should be done differently of, of letting us know so that we can educate the right thing. So there's typically there's only one operator in that vehicle. That is correct. He operates the equipment that loads. 
That is correct. Now there are in some of the smaller areas or tighter areas, we will have one green road truck that services those just based on the setup of the, the town. One, one thing I, I think that <clears throat> might make a little difference for when we put it on the sidewalk or on the roof, those are uh, two points that uh, will get clear the other day. Or the coach one on the sidewalk or in the roof. Yeah, so really they can be serviced from, from either spot. Um, the only thing that we stipulated in our uh, operations proposals in those townhouse areas is that they be put out at the edge so that we can grab them with that automated truck and not have to get out and roll the carts. But other than that, again, if, if there's an area where we find the carts are not in a spot that are easily accessible, we'll work through those on a case-by-case -case basis. But generally, out to the curb where there's nothing around it that would impact us lifting the container up with the truck is, is where they need to be. Yeah, and I know this might be a little bit more work for you guys, but once the uh, coats are picked up, I would ask that you put them back on the trike on that on the sidewalk because that clears the road after you got them. Okay, so if even if the containers are put out on the road, you prefer them to be on the sidewalk? After they don't. Okay. After they don't, put them on the sidewalk because it clears the room uh, okay. so that we can sit around. Okay. One thing I have is uh, a problem when we get to take the trash can after you dump it and put it right in the driveway after that, just move it as it's in the driveway. Don't sure. drop the driveway. Yeah, that, that is uh, something that we train our employees on and every customer that we service, whether that actually whether it be a contract, a single homeowner that's chosen to do business with us. We don't want to make the customer have to park the vehicle, get out, and move that car. That's uh, that's not how we do business. And look, some things happen, but as long as it's reported to us, we can, we can trust us that we'll take care of that with that individual. So Jeff, what I'm hearing is that wherever the customer puts the can is where you'll pick it up and you'll place it back if it's in a good area to pick up and put down. So I'm thinking that like on Whitehall Road, it's a, uh, and quite frankly, it's a snow emergency route. And, you know, you have to keep that highway as clear as you can. So I guess if you put the can on the sidewalk, it'll be put back on the sidewalk. I just noticed it was a lot neater in the proximity. Sure. And yeah. Whoever started doing that, was, I just picked up on the can. Okay. Yeah, and I don't foresee any issues with that. The arms have extenders out from the truck, so there shouldn't be any issues with that. But again, as we get started and get implemented with this, if there's any concerns, please just let us know. I mean, we, we look at this as we're your partner in this, and we all win if the residents are happy. And so if there's any concerns, that's the key thing is we just communicate about it. We get as much information, and we're always going to try to work through any situation. And, and we do. I mean, this is this is what we do. That's how we stay in business and engage with customers. By the um, way. Speaking of communication, I did have a question. You mentioned that if communication was needed with one of the customers, uh, that would be performed. In what way? Is your driver going to speak with them? directly yeah i think that if there was a specific there's a number of different ways like if uh, there was an issue with the containers like this next question um people have big old packs of sling bags um, next to the containers so you, you can tag the containers um in situations like that and just communicate the remote on the container um or if they need more specific information you know, you can send it to the specific object yeah no, 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 no. So if, if the resident happened to be out, sure, our driver would have no problem having that conversation with that individual resident. Um, but if they're not out there, generally the communication comes back to the supervisor or to our uh, logistics analysts who are at their desk all day long with two ways and phone numbers. And usually what we do with that is, is we'll contact the resident. Now, having a phone number uh, is key to that, right? So I don't know if we're getting a list of phone numbers for all the residents. We don't have any. Okay, but we will be. We'll work with you. Okay, so if, if we have that, we have no problem making those calls to the resident. Um, otherwise, we'd have to work with you to, to get in contact with that resident somehow. What would be likely to do with the traffic managers from like in the ADPW, but also too, depending on what information we collect on your website or the customer service website, so that would be the other way to connect with the customer. Yeah, that's true. So on, on that flyer, I mean, then we'll be jumping on and uh, push that information into the system. And once we have that information, we oftentimes communicate with the customer. 
emergency response emergency and evacuation. Yeah, and, and at least for the first month, we'll have Andre will be down here. We'll have we'll have plenty of resources for the leadership side in the in the town to make sure everything's going smoothly. So if we need to go and visit a resident at a home, even if they don't happen to be home at that moment when our drivers through there, we'll make sure that we get to that resident. Yeah, and that's the only way we can kind of weed out any of the the challenges to start off the contract, which there will be. Uh, but the quicker we resolve them, the again the better it is for everybody. Yeah, thank you. As far as the carts and boxes next to the carts, the biggest thing with this is that the carts they hold a lot. I think we're going to be quite a uh, we will we will really try to keep it to the card contents only to kind of get them in the habit of the so I think that's going to be a key a key point. Um, how we respect the mattresses and couches of the uh, judges, like I said, we would just treat them like we would with um, any of the card items. So we collect, we're going to collect the ones that are in the rest of them. And again, we it wasn't in the in the RFP to do that initially. I think it was set up to do it once a month. Um, so we looked at the town and we said we're going to be going to a different type of card system, and we just thought it made better sense to um, pick up at least one bulk item a week, and that's why we built in that rear rear little piece to help us to kind of um, help us with any kind of miscellaneous things. Um, yeah. Some of some of the apartment developments, yeah, I do know that some of the neighbors bring some of the stuff to floors. To somebody else's property, share the store, so then start that bulk stuff just to uh, prepare them from taking their stuff and putting it in the first spot. Yeah, honestly, the, there's nothing necessarily to deter that, but I think that's where our partnership, sorry, that's where our partnership matters the most, right? Is with this change in service, one of the key things anytime we've been involved in going from an unlimited type collection service, which is what you had under the last contract to containerize plus a scheduled bulk service is we both have to be consistent in our messaging to the residents. And so if we're at an address and we see something like a pile of bulk out there and we take the one item, again, we'll be working again with that resident. If that resident says to us, well, that's not my stuff, I didn't put it there, that's where we'll need to partner with the town and say, hey, how can we control this? Because Again, that's not good for the town and it's not good for us and it's not consistent with the specifications and the bid. So hopefully those are one-off situations, but there will be some of that. But to me, again, we, we do our research with the resident and contact them. And if they're telling us or telling you that, hey, that, that's not my stuff, then we're gonna have to figure out how we determine who's putting it there. And then we'll have to work with those residents to say, hey, you can't do this anymore. This is not, not part of the contract. And sometimes, and sometimes it's difficult because of our location, you know, we would like to carry and some people will put their trike in your place and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. And that way they don't have to pay the trike or whatever they are, they can do it. But in those instances, you may have somebody also going to know the resident, and that way you come in with their case books to them. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right, and and that's not uncommon in unlimited trash collection. People sure. get very creative in how they can save for themselves or or be resourceful in their mind. Uh, but again, that's where the partnership between the, the town and us, because that's not what we've signed up to do. That's not what you want from your trash collection in, in your in your town. So uh, that's where that partnership again just becomes critical, and we work through those issues. And again. We're not going to leave the streets dirty, right? We're going to resolve the issue and make sure that gets collected. But we need to know that our partnership is such that we're going to eliminate those issues over time. We're not just going to leave stuff around. But if we're out there and we just tell our drivers, hey, no matter what's out there, pick it up, that's not the right approach. Because then nobody will realize the change. And then if you try to make that change later, it's going to be that much harder. So it will feel a little bit like ripping the bandaid off initially. But that would be short term pain, I promise, mm -hmm. for a lot of long term gain. Well, so, I want to comment that our spec said that all trash and recyclables have to be in that container. Yeah. Because yeah. that's what the Republic signed up to do. Yeah. So I know the partnership was, uh, was critical there for the transition. Mm -hmm. But I, I do understand, too, that your obligation is simply to pick up that trash and our uh, residents would be required to contain it that way. Hopefully, we'll yeah. learn over time, so it'll be a much neater 
operation and easy for them more efficiently picked up. Yeah. yeah, and that's great to hear. And that's a, absolutely what it will turn out to be is that people will learn this very quickly. Again, there'll be a little short term pain in the, in the beginning, but people learn very quickly and adjust to it. So as long as those standards and requirements are up here. Is there a specific bulk so our operational plan has us in the town four days to collect bulk. So there will be a district map for bulk collection by area as well. And that'll be all in the, the maps will all be in all that information material and not as well. So okay. along the same line, so in your uh, brochure that you're going to pay about, you're going to let each individual know that expectations are for everything to be in the code and nothing over there. Is that correct? Okay. That, that is correct. Right. Same thing. Yes. And, and should recyclables be unbagged? Yes. Yeah, that, that will also be in the information well, material. The nice thing is we're going to be following the Cecil County um, Department of Public Works. We take all this material from the landfill. Um, so everything that they're pushing out to the county is going to follow those you know, recommendations. So, you know, nothing unusual there. And just when he says landfill, the recycle yeah. drop off is part of that same complex. So the recyclables and the trash go to Cecil County and follow the Cecil County waste plan. But yes, we'll put that in the materials that we want the recycle unbagged because the bags uh, obviously can't be recycled and then just cause problems to the recycle center. I think that's a uh, uh, an area that we're going to have to educate better uh, because what we found during the last several years, and it's probably been since we started recycling, is that even even our household we weren't really aware of a lot of different things. I mean, uh, when my kids were in the house, they threw the pizza box in there with a with a little bit of pizza in there, right? And now it becomes regular trash, right? Right. So, um, and and then that makes the expense higher for us when we pay the the uh, landfill costs because now it's regular trash. Am I saying that correctly? Well, yes. And uh, yes, we pass the call. Uh, so it's it's a challenge uh, uh, to. I mean, it, the word should say clean recycling, and it, and it kind of, quite frankly, it sucks. You know, it really does. It it sucks for all of us because I don't like. Uh, uh, rinsing out my uh, milk jug all the time, or or my uh, whiskey bottles, let's say, uh, or that's Earl's whiskey bottles. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it, there's a, there's a lot to that, and uh, but if you take recycling seriously, this is what you have to do. You have to do it, and I think that maybe phase two, as we come back at some point. And we really talk about recycling, how we can get better at it. Also, yeah, and there's many times where we're coming into recycling presentation about what good recycling looks like because you are not the only one that's confused by it, mm -hmm. uh, and it's cha it changes a lot. That's part of the problem is it has changed dramatically throughout the years, and folks have heard something along the way and keep doing it that way. And uh, but we have we have websites and we have different other. Uh, educational opportunities that we can share, and we can even talk about you know different events that may go down, uh, go on in Elkton, that we can have a table set up that we can educate folks that are there for that something be bigger great. and better. We'll videotape you that. telling us what we can and what we can't. Well, so on that great. on that uh, marketing, this will be uh, something called Recycling Simplified, which will take you to videos, about five five minute videos, three minute videos on how to recycle products and how to recycle. That was um, developed right, right, right when the recycling market started to change dramatically back in 2017. Um, so that that the issue of contamination has been pretty, uh, pretty, uh, yeah, hotly discussed. Um, and, and I don't believe that we ever, we never went through it to tell our residents about the difference between. Good, good recycle and bad recycle. No, and I think that the container piece is going to help. So getting the containers out there, getting the card contents on them, then you can really start to dig into what's actually happening with the recycle. Yeah, yeah just to, 
Sorry about that. So one thing to add on to that, to Dominic's point, if, if somebody's used to just throwing trash out there right now, all of a sudden they're limited, quote unquote, to a 96 gallon trash container, but then they have all this space in their recycle container, that's going to usually encourage somebody, well, let me find out what I should be putting in this one so that I have enough room for my actual trash in this one. So anytime we've gone to automated service, containerized service, our, the municipalities do see a boost in recycling participation and autonomous, which is great again for the so the next question was with, with regard to the public containers. Some people have their own uh, containers. Um, the reason we don't uh, utilize the customer containers is that the trucks are designed uh, to work with the you know, heavy routine containers that we have to purchase, and there's only this real great um, you know, containers to be purchased in a, in a typical retail situation. So, so that's one thing that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, if they do break, for some reason, we need to replace it. So it's not only that. Um, <laughs> plastic bags for moving trash receptacles. So the trash receptacles. The receptacle we're doing, we talked about that uh, in October. Um, but this next question uh, popped up here. Have decentralized dumpsters replaced the proposed receptacles for the drop and the street? So I think what we want to do with that is set the contract up the way that it's in um, spec. And then obviously we want to fix any problems. Once we see what it is, um, we can adjust as needed. So that's where our is going to be to help us um, with what makes the most sense operationally. If you guys have specific things that you want, uh, I don't think that that would be a problem to, to adjust as, as we put it in specific areas. I think I think my biggest concern with Main Street in general was I think that they're not going to be able to use the bigger containers and uh, take them off the street during the non hours and then I, I just don't see how that's going to work and I think they're going to there's going to be bag 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 everywhere and my thinking was why we started this was we could find a centralized location and I'm fine to get with the landlords on October the 11th and say, folks, anyone that has a rental on Main Street and uh, you have apartments upstairs, we're gonna have you have a tenant come down and take that bag of trash to a centralized location uh, instead of having the dumpster per se where they can't haul them. But I understand what you're saying. Let's get through maybe, I'm okay with that. Okay. But I don't know where they're gonna put the trash. I understand. I don't know where they're going to put it. I, I just see it going right on the main street, but we'll talk that over with the landlords on the 11th. I think maybe, maybe we can get some of that. Yeah. And we'll make sure that we get out there and really take a good look. Cause again, going back to partnership, if there's a better way to do it, we're all for that. Mm -hmm. too. And we're all through, uh, all for working through that. Um, so we'll, we'll be prepared for that meeting then come October. Like if we have anything for that time, we'll, we'll throw it out there and, and see what we can do. The, the on street uh, compactors, have you guys ever had any success with those? See, in municipalities use those? The big bellies? Yeah, I think you just throw your trash in it and it, and it uh, compacts it right on the street, and uh, the resident would put it in there, compact it. And does that, is there any value to any of that? I've seen a few municipalities use them. Typically, what happens is it's kind of a grant uh, situation where somebody applies for, for money and then they um, it, it, you could purchase these, these units that are typically owned by a municipality or the city of Pennsylvania or whatever it is. Um, and it, it's, it could be effective. I mean, they're, they're not, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. So we'll, we'll take that as a takeaway, if you will. I, I don't have any personal experience with it. We don't have any personal experience in the market with it. We can certainly look into it though and, and help provide any information that might be helpful. I know that we're going to get onto the townhouse communities. I, I think that our biggest challenge, our biggest challenge, and I and, and it'll be our partner's biggest challenge sure. also yeah. is is Main Street and some of the apartment complexes that not apartment townhouse communities that uh we don't want them to have that 90 six gallon container in the front of their house. And, and so in some cases, 
their homeowners associations and some of the newer don't want them to have it in the front. So it's very difficult for them to haul that container through their house from the rear yard because there's really no rear yard access to the front of the building. And shame on us, you know, over the years that they built these units that these things, no one really ever thought about this, right? And it's an ever changing uh, times. But those are the things that we need to think about moving forward to make it easier for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the public works fund did back in the fall take us through a few of those uh, communities and we looked for spots where they maybe want to put a larger type of portion. It's a little bit challenged, right? It's it, it is. And, and then one other thought was maybe we use the 96 gallon containers and we put all of them in one area. Yeah. And then, then the rest then can come down, take it and put it into the area. But one day a week, when it's that trash time, someone's got to be responsible to put those units out so you can pick them up. So I know that that's a, kind of a... Yeah, so that'll be, that'll be uh, another one. They're going to have to work through you know, both of those scenarios. Really, I guess, identify those particular communities that yeah, they're, they're kind of a hot spot, and then we just act accordingly based on what we see on the first 30 to 60 days. Actually, in your experience, in and other places, is there something that we can do as we tell people that they're restricted about them? Yeah, I mean, we typically would go out and meet with the uh, developers and recommend contact with parents if that was appropriate um, over commercial pads and you know, that type of situation. So that that is typically part of um, you know setting up a community, but for whatever reason, it's usually done last. Um, everything else is kind of put in place, and then at the very end, there's a phone call that comes in and you know, they're in service. So yeah, there's no doubt that as these come online, if we can get involved in the process, we can, we can just. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, we have to go to the system and then, you know, we can always, you know, plan on future. So that, I think, oh, so let's see what else. Talking about the receptacles. Do they pick up any containers or totes around there as a way to transition from food in the trunk to town or anything else? So I think the uh, DPW is working with uh, waste management for them to extract their carts. Um, that's typically not something you would do is, is um, collect in the company's carts. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I'm sure that they're going to pull that out before you. So the, so the play would be, Dan, when they're putting out the new carts, you won't take any of the old carts until the new carts are in place. Yeah. Or you're going to go right behind them, I guess, or something will go right behind them. Yeah, and again, based on the timing of the cart delivery, there should be no issues where a resident doesn't have their cart in time for the start of the contract with that plan of October 23rd through the 27th. Okay. Okay. We have a we have, if we have a ninety five um, for the trash and ninety five for the recycle and then in, uh, there's a, a slightly smaller container but we only have a hundred of them so those are sixty five items they're not dramatically different in terms of uh, uh, measurements you can see that they're two two inches on the height. Uh, Four inches in width. They're not dramatic. So they're very, they're very neat. The first thing we're going to do is public education plan. Uh, that. Um, yeah, any other questions that you guys have? Well, if you're going to drop off those two parts again. Like, 
I guess it's up to the how how the town help you with that, right? So it depends on any that um it's mandatory when you're stuck on the fence for the size. Um your bid specs basically say that every every house gets one trash one inch size. Yeah, and I think the way we would approach that, I mean we we have that situation that pops up right. Um and, and the last thing we want is somebody being forced to keep that recycle container and then now start using it just as a second trash container because then again we get back to contamination. So we could work through that, but I think our initial approach should be, you know, you need to again education for the resident. Just remember you can only put trash in that one container. So if you don't recycle today, but your container is getting full, you might want to give it a couple of weeks. And maybe you want to start recycling because you're only going to be able to fill up the trash container until the top. And if you have more to go, then you're you, you're going to have to wait for the next week. Whereas if you start to separate, then you're going to have more than enough space for all your needs. So I think that's probably the best approach initially is say, hey, you might not recycle now and you might not want to, but just maybe hang on to it a little bit. But ultimately, if somebody absolutely flat out doesn't want to recycle, we'd rather get that card in again so it doesn't just become a set, uh, second trash container. We can come and pick those up and, and bring it back. That's mm -hmm. And we don't want bad recycling. Right. Exactly. But it also doesn't, you know, for interrupting, but I think it also behooves us for everyone to recycle what they can recycle because sure. the tipping fees are much more expensive. Yeah. 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 So if we can get more. To, to the extent that you're recycling, you're in theory saving money from your environment. Because what happens is the recycling material goes to the system. I like system. the strategy. We're going to move out. Yeah. And, and we'll just do our best to continue to educate. And uh, we want them to use it yeah. because it is less money. And the number was three times less. Yeah. And, and again, with the informational resources that we're going to supply to you, you'll have some quick spots to be able to point the residents in the direction so they can educate themselves and, and, and learn. And again, is it a little extra effort? Absolutely. But after you start doing it, and then you realize, hey, this isn't that bad, and it's good for the environment, and it's good for our township, ultimately controlling costs over time, generally when it's the what's in it for them is presented to them, they'll, they'll tend to get on board. Does anyone from the board have any additional questions? <clears throat> so as, as, as you all come, do you foresee anything that you would consider maybe an obstacle as far as transition that's going to happen from the old and you getting the new. So, honestly, from our standpoint, no. Uh, Dominic mentioned that we're in the process of hiring drivers, but we have right now, uh, throughout the span of my control, I have 11 drivers that are in other states right now servicing our customers. And so, for some reason, we can't hire all the drivers we need to right off the bat. I have 11 folks that I can pull back tomorrow. And we'll be more than fine. So, from a people standpoint, no issues whatsoever. Uh, we already have lined up uh, rental trucks to utilize until we get our brand new vehicles in to service the contract. Unfortunately, I think somebody mentioned about the piece of equipment you're looking for. Supply chain is still not really caught up, uh, but we already have that lined up. So, we will have no issues with resources. And then again, we have uh, plenty of folks that have been through these. Uh, there will be things that pop up, there's no doubt, but we don't have any concern with any. Big obstacles or challenges. Uh, we've ordered the the residential containers, the carts. Those are on track to be in and be delivered. That's usually something that could pop up that can obviously cause big issues. But everything is going according to plan right now, uh, so we don't foresee any challenges with that. Again, the, the only thing that I could say is a possibility is these couple of areas you mentioned because again, it's a, it sounds like it's a very big concern of of the board, and I understand that. Uh, but again, nothing that we're concerned that we won't be able to figure out. Very quickly, and then we get them excited. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to open up the the. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that has any questions or concerns about uh, our trash pickup? And I want to keep it unrelated to fees. That's that can be addressed to us at the public comment time. But any questions in regards to? How Republic is going to work. Yes, sir. Please state your name and address for us. John Stanley, 24 Jefferson Woods. I have a question. Uh, 
company does it now, it comes four o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning on Tuesday to pick up the dog and get to Elkton High School. And we don't have, we have a, a buffer zone between our house and school. And every Tuesday morning, there's early dog stuff over there. I'd like to know what time you plan on picking up the dog. <laughs> yeah, that's we hear it too. Yeah, you know that's a that's a great question. And and what happens is the uh, uh, businesses are required in a lot of cases to have to provide uh, a trash service. It's not covered under the municipal rate. But I think what you're saying is that we do want to know what time you want to pick up. I want to know that also. But I think in your case. They're picking up trash at Singerly Fire Company or wherever it may be at 4 a.m. and they probably shouldn't. Right? And the library. And the library. They shouldn't be picking it up. Uh, we should we should notify that there should be a certain certain time. But what time is Republican open at all? I think it's 6 a.m. No, we don't do it. 6 a.m. Yeah. Occasionally, occasionally, what he's really doing is. You may ask to come in earlier, but that would only be an hour, and maybe once or twice. Yeah, and so generally speaking, whatever the the noise ordinances are, whatever the specs are, that we do not operate outside of those. Um, if there's ever an issue again where it's perceived that we are, um, just let us know, and, and we'll make sure that we're not. Um, and and the the point that Dominic just referred to there, uh, again, the the folks that are out on the front lines for us, picking up trash and recycling all day long. It, it could be a rough day when it's 100, 105 degrees. And so there are times where we'll reach out to our partners and say, hey, look, we'd like to get an early start on today, give them one less hour even in the, the middle of the heat of the day. And and most of the time, municipalities understand that. Yeah, so we're, right now we're, we're looking at 6 a.m. And then you would notify us, and then we need to do a better job of getting that information out to our residents if it's going to be that week. Mr. Stanley, did you have any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, as far as uh, the recycling, uh, what are you going to do about grease, oil, not motor oil, you know, just normal cooking grease? How do we recycle that? Uh, where are we put? You can't dump it down on the sink because the town says don't put anything in the filter bin that don't belong. That's correct. And oil, cooking oil, whatever, you put it down in the mode, eventually it's going to stop up to that cup. And it's going to cost you so much money. Well, listen, that's, that's, a, that. that's a great question. I know how I dispose of it, uh, but I'd like to ask Republic on how they feel we should do it. So I think we want to circle back with uh, Tanya at, at Cecil County. She she runs that whole site, and I know that they have very many different ways to um, dispose of different things like aluminum and batteries. They can really transfer to different recycling streams and trash. So I know what I've normally done with my own cooking grease is after I'm done cooking with it, I pour it into a glass or a cup. It hardens, yeah. and then I dispose of it right with the trash. Now. That's what I was told to do years ago, uh, but I'm not sure if that is the correct method or not, but that's the way that I've always done. Another question, Mr. Stanley, we'll get back to you on that. Okay. It's uh, a great question. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, you said uh, you had asked about motor oil? No, I'm not talking about motor oil. Oh, okay, I was gonna say that goes to public work. Yeah, the I know what that is. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, Uh, I had another question about the, the you said the trash process. Regular trash you can still pick up, put it in a plastic bag, and put it in box, right? That's correct, yes. Okay, that's just come back to that. Yes, sir. And another rumor I heard was that we had to keep the trash in our garage as well, our trash. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about that? That's yeah. That's not uh, that's not set by us. Thank you, Mr. Desvedo. I think you had a question or comment, or was it answered? No, it was. But look at my other. Um, 
can replacement. What's going to happen when a can gets broken or missing? You know, you'll reach out to us. Same way we do uh, we'll pick up the manager and just uh, schedule up the spot. Who who is they? The, the, the end for the town. Do we have to go through the town? I have a broken education, but I have a broken can. What do I do? Yeah, we're going to continue to go through the town to collect them. And then they're going to be with the post supervisor. And then we're going to start with them. Okay. So you'll contact Tracy to say, I'm going to such a such a guy and get it broken because it's a flight of And then she'll let us know. And then we can start. That you accept the liability of that broken can. It's not going to be passed on to you. Yeah. That's that's a benefit of us purchasing the okay. So the person that generates more trash, and let's assume they're good recyclers, and they still, because there's a lot of pigs out there, they end up with more than a trash can for them, even after they utilize the recycling program. So that person needs more than a can. What do you do? The, the, the bid provides for someone who wants to sell a can. So it's an additional fourteen twenty five that would be half the cost. So we could, in theory, purchase another container. So, so if they want additional five cans, it's fifty percent for the additional four cans. Is that five? Yes. Uh, yeah. No. No. I no. You can. You still have the four, but I was gonna. You're absolutely right. So I should have mentioned that, or it was it is in the agreement that uh, two containers, one trash, one recycling is going to be provided to everyone. If you wanted to buy any additional containers, it's like fourteen dollars and some cents. So the can comes free, but you pay additional. That's it. Exactly. You don't pay for the can. You pay the service that was paid. Right. You, you look at that container as part of the service. The container accommodates or will accommodate up to 330 pounds. Yeah, that's the stuff. Is there an issue when, because in the past I've heard when people put, you have a vacant, let's say an owner has a vacant unit, they put construction material in it. I've had issues where a guy won't pick it up because it's construction in that can. That's accurate. So seeing you wouldn't go into an MSW shop and get it and be accepted. How is that fair to that tenant? Or, I'm sorry, how is that fair to the owner that's paying for your service and getting nothing if that unit is vacant? And they're not and they're not utilizing any type of household garbage and you don't you refuse to pick up construction to bring in that can. In that can, that can, I mean, what's the difference? What's the cost to you to well, pick up that construction? So the town, I'm sorry, let me finish. Yeah. What's so what's the difference? If the can is full, the can is full. What difference does it make to you to pick that debris up? It's actually all uh, in the contract with scratch. Yeah, so the, that when you take that stuff to the landfill, it's it's priced differently. Uh, no, it's not. Well, so it's categorized differently. So C and D it is right. So so we're contracted to pick up this solid waste, and C and D is not technically considered just a solid waste, and, and that's what that money gets back to. That's not a Sorry, I really doesn't answer. I mean, what's the difference? The cost is the cost. If you take that same can, whether it's got construction to bring in it or household, it's the same cost to you. So why 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 do I I have an I have an empty unit sitting there? I'm paying you for that service, but I'm not getting it. So it, it really comes down to the, the contract, right? And so we we submitted a bid for the contract based on the specifications, and so within the specifications are our responsibilities. Anything that's not in that contract is not our responsibility. So it's not really a question of what's the difference or not. It's just that's not that doesn't fall within the contract that we submitted the bid for. So it's not included in the stuff. Maybe the next contract we should look at that, or we 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 could look at that. But I would say that we contracted you to pick up municipal waste. And, and that's not classified as, but we do have a spot for you if you want to take it over to the public works and Dan's dumpster if we needed to get it. In. So just, I just want to add a little bit to this. Thank so you. the C and D waste barrel it is it's that gets its requirements for production. Put their impact on the truck. It typically involves helpers, depending on. So 
when you look at a day and you look at the district column rate, you can definitely say you're going to need a specific type of truck and a specific system. They can start to see and see you doing that, which some towns do. It's, a, it's, it's kind of a it could be a problem. I'm going to try to park the routes and to not finish. There's just a whole host of reasons. So it's, it's not um, not in any way malicious. It just doesn't fit into the normal Yeah. Is it also correct that when the construction debris, when you go into the landfill, municipal waste can hang a right, construction debris and wood and so forth. That's where I've always been directed to go to the left where the wood and metal stuff. I think what you're uh, thinking is household versus going up to the cell and dump. When you pull up to the scale, they ask you whether it's household or construction. The rate's the rate. And it just seems to me whatever fits in the can fits in the can. And if it accommodates 330 pounds, I don't know what the difference is. I just feel like for the person that's not generating household trash, if it's on a vacant unit, I feel like they're being done at the service. They're not getting the same. If I live next to you and I'm unfortunate enough to have a unit that's vacant and I fill the can and you fill your can, what's the difference? Why do they, why do they ask you that question? Because they're trying to get you I think just to try to keep track of what's coming in, possibly, but it's the same rate. It's always, it's an either or situation when they ask you. And if it's mixed, it's mixed. No, never. It's whether you're going to dump or household. Normally, when you pull in to the scale, you go over the scale. And if, it's, if you don't want to go up into the cell and get dirty, or if you don't have a need, sometimes they, if you can't dump, they don't want to go up in the cell because they're tying up guys like this with their trucks. You got a guy up their hand unloading where he should be in a household section. That's why. I mean, we've never come up with a I have a little lady of uh, down the block from the family of five, and he's going to have to put it in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just like the other day, 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 the other Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Anything else, Mark? Is there ever a time that they take recycling and take it to the same place as the rest of the garbage? Just out of curiosity. So we do. T the answer is yes. When it's contaminated, recycling. Then it becomes trash, and then it costs us three times more to get rid of it. So if it's in a different, so what I like about this is we've got two different color cans, and we're going to hope to educate everyone to know here's the type of recycling you need to put in it. But if it gets contaminated, it will go into the other. It, it contaminates the whole recycle load. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely correct. Yeah. And and we've been and that's what's really hurt our town is that everyone's it's very difficult. What do we do as far as marking the can? Because I just went through it with the town in Northeast. You guys did a great job. Got all your cans out, put them out, uh, put the little pamphlet. wasn't in paper. It was just closed the lid on piece of paper. Um, and then quickly people were out there with spray cans. And marking up the cans, I think would be a real plus to somehow number those cans to the addresses so that you don't have all the hideous spray paint all over the trash cans defacing them. Because almost instantly, that's what happens. People are out there with their spray cans marking up the cans with their addresses. I ran around with the key lady, like seeing all the names, all the addresses, and went around and put them on there in hopes that I did have one can of beat me to the punch. Mm -hmm. and but she did it nice, but it's not old stuff. Mm -hmm. But that's a real, you know, we're looking at these cans, and, and I agree, having those cans of recycled cans, they're not going to recycle, you shouldn't have the cans. 
you should have that means of getting them back because it really does. When you take a townhouse community, eight, an 18 foot unit, and you have three foot and three foot, six foot of it, it's trash cans. Is there any ordinance about putting cans behind houses and not seeing them on the street? And I'm sorry, that's a little bit off for you guys. Is there any ordinance? Do we have an ordinance in town that makes you bring a can out prior to trash it up and take it back? We have to remove the when it's empty, but we don't specify on owner's property where they put it back. They can put it wherever they want to. They can put it wherever they want to, but now in some neighborhoods that have homeowners associations, which are very few today uh, in Elton, now Patriots Clan and also uh, Kensington Courts, they require the can to be put back in, in a way in a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. Well, I told him one fellow we had a document that suggested putting the cans in the rear of the home. And I also thought that document stated the fact that you should bring your can out at a certain time before the trike came up. I don't know. We had something similar to that. That years ago, we had a, a, a brochure from code enforcement, and it stated that, but it's not the ordinance. It okay. just said, please do this. I realize we're encouraging and you want to encourage the recycling, but for that person like me that's not going to recycle, should we maybe some type of questionnaire up front to ask people, but then you're kind of giving them the option not to recycle, but why deliver a recycled can only have to go back and pick it up or have it sitting there and facing and just unattractive to, to a house or to units that have all these recycled cans out there that aren't being used? Well, and it would save you guys money. I would say on the day that they come to your house, we're going to hope to be there. You just tell them to keep them on the truck. That's what you're going to do. Or Dan will come get them. Something's going to happen. We, we, I mean, we, he's we, not going to do it. If it's not mandatory and people aren't going to use them, it would save you guys from the cans, from them being filled with the improper stuff sitting there. So if they're not going to use them, why put them out there? We did differentiate, right? We're talking over nine thousand. How many? Over nine thousand. Nine thousand cans. Nine thousand cans. Not right. At the right time, to get the right person. I'm just thinking ahead of time. I mean, we're out there notifying them of a change. So I just want to get back to about the uh, how many uh, the containers they have. Um, your signs you guys. So if somebody's going to get an address, we'll know where that is going to be. And all of them are good. Okay, I keep the numbers, but that's a hot item. If you need to sit out there, people sure. are always taking No, I understand. So in the Northeast, they had the yeah, like, that. They had what? They, they knew where the containers were just supposed to go. So people take the long way. But uh, they, they actually know where that is. Yeah, I track all my numbers in the address. Mark, anything else? I don't think so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Matt, you. you. No, I, my question was about the combination. I mean, say I really do a lot of clean, clean recycling. Mm -hmm. And I usually get a Christmas tree lady to leave up a rag in the yard. And if you're crazy, you're going to recycle it. Then you've got all the things in the truck. The whole batch is contaminated. <laughs> I am back here. I believe <laughs> it, it really kind of depends. I mean, the, the folks at the recycle, if we see something that's grossly uh, contaminated, we see a vacuum cleaner sticking out of the container, we know not even to pick that up. That's going to cause problems. But generally speaking, uh, unfortunately, we can't be trash police, right? And recycle police. We can't open up every container and go through every uh, one of the contents. But we'll bring it to the recycling, and, and they're generally the ones that will determine. If the whole load is contaminated, or if they can pick out some around that that's contaminated, so that's really for them to to work through, and then you know that impacts your charge then for that. But very good, we appreciate that. Any other questions or Lou? Anything else? No, I want to thank the public for putting on this project, and we look forward to working closely with you to make sure. It's can we that. can we cut to see if there's anyone online? Well, yeah, I want to have a question. Not make sure you're done, Mr. Chair. Let me see if there's any uh, any names up there. I think we're all good. 
Chip Cromwell might have a question about you get into Earlville. There we go. All right. Very good. Thank you, guys. Thanks. We're looking forward to this partnership. Thank you guys as well. Thank you. And let there be lights. Thank you. All right. All right, Lou, you have a resolution on R11 2023 trash establishing the uh, trash recycling collection fee for the five year period of November 1 to 2000, November 1, 2023 to October 31st, 2028. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys both got enough. So, ask the board to accept this uh, resolution so we can. Implement these fees commencing November 1st. So, do we have a motion to accept resolution R11 2023? We have a motion. We second. have a, and a second. Any discussion? Well, I, I'd like to just say that, uh, as I've stated before, this is this is not pretty. Uh, the the cost of uh, our trash collection has basically almost tripled uh, per quarter. And it's not a pretty thing. And uh, uh, we put the uh, contract out, and uh, this is what came back. We had three qualified bidders. They were all within uh, uh, a dollar amount apart from each other. And uh, we had a, a, a contract with waste management prior to this, which was. Uh, uh, five or six year deal, or maybe it's a seven year deal with waste management. And uh, we had a pretty good thing going. But we also recognized that over the last couple of years, we knew that we had a good deal because of the quality of the service that we were we were getting from waste management really took somewhat of a dive, in my opinion. And uh, uh, I don't like it. Um, we did our best that we could to to make it right for our residents. You got five residents up here. It's going to be paying it too. Uh, I think we got let's see one, two, three is on a somewhat fixed income up here, which is uh, a lot to absorb. And uh, we we've got to persevere through it, and we'll continue to do whatever we can to get these numbers lowered in the near future. Uh, if possible, but I don't think it's possible. Any other discussion on this at all with the group up here? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <clears throat> all right, next up is the uh, order. Uh, and I, I only, my only comment here is that this doesn't include the uh, disposal either. This yeah. would be as if for collection. So the disposal, the landfill fees, which are considerable, are captured under the general fund uh, budget. So, well, I mean, it's even higher cost uh, than people might realize because they don't see it in the fee, they see it it's in the taxes. Well, I'd, I'd just like to say that, you know, going back many years on, on trash collection, the town of Elton used to do their own trash collection. I think I was on the town council. I know Charlie and Jean was both on the board at that time also. And um, I think we had one truck in town that picked up uh, yeah, all, of, Billy and Kenny. all and the residents' yeah. trash in the town. And the town uh, uh, has grown. And uh, imagine we've gone from one, one crew that did the whole town to now, I think twice a week back then, and now we've gone to a, a, an entity that's coming in and giving us four days a week trash collection, as well as uh, fall pickup. Uh, our challenge with, you know, those those two or three guys, they're not out there anymore. You know, you can't find guys that's going to uh, pick up that trash and lug it and throw it in like they did. They worked their tail off back then, and they got it done. And, and the rate was included in our real estate taxes, if I remember correctly back then. So when you when you uh, had your trash pickup, it was included because our employees were doing it. Our employees were doing it. 
uh, it was the way it was. And, and then I remember we had one or two workman's comp uh, issues and uh, we had no one else that could do the trash pickup. And that kind of directed us to go to the waste management, if I remember, in 1996 or 95. We did that. And uh, ever since then, uh, this was a contracted service. So then it started being put on the, I don't think it was put on the utility bills until around 2003 or 2004 in that range. But we always have paid the landfill costs, which is included in your real estate taxes. Uh, which is about on top of this, if I'm not mistaken, it's about eight hundred thousand. Well, they say five hundred six thousand just for landfill. Yeah, five 40, to six hundred thousand just in thousand a month. And it, and those are the costs that if we were able to recycle correctly, then they would go down. Those are the ones that would go down to us. This fee will never go down, but the landfill costs could come down. So that's all I have to add to that. I know I, I rattled on a little bit. Next up, Lou. The uh, ordinance five, 2023, is here for introduction. These are for increase the uh, water and sewer rates in order to reverse the decline in those funds. And I think Steve uh, prepared the uh, ordinance uh, adjustments or uh, rate adjustments and, and uh, comment on them. I think we got to. Well, I know. The. Uh, uh, they've def you've deferred this for some time. But well, we have, and the ordinance is just for introduction purposes, and I know I think we'll get uh, uh, a lot of people in here to talk about the water and sewer rates. And and it's not, uh, you know, once again, everything around us, the costs are going out astronomically, and uh, uh, the part that really gets me is that we, we did a pretty darn good job of lowering our water and sewer rates uh, Eight years ago, I think we lowered our water rates 11%. We we lowered, uh, so five years ago, we, we lowered our sewer rates 11%. And that was to do our best to help our residents lowering the cost of our water and sewer service. You know, looking back, maybe we should have kept them the same and, and increased them like the, the study. We paid for two different studies in each study, uh, which we don't like to accept has these numbers uh, quite a bit higher uh, than where we even should, where we're proposing to be here now. But I think the thing that really hits home with me is that we need to pull, anytime you're a municipality over 10,000 people, uh, this was brought up in, I think, 2004, 2005, you have to have a backup plan to have 25% of your water usage backed up by an, an additional source, I think 25% was the number. And the town of Elton entered into an agreement with Artesian Water to have that backup source. That's so if the, if the, if the wells ever got contaminated, whether uh, uh, the streams were ever contaminated, it gave us a source to be able to provide quality water to our residents. And once again, you gotta keep in mind the number, over 10,000 people. So other municipalities in our county, they don't have to abide by that. We have to have that second source. The part that where I was getting at is that Artesian is selling us water at $4.61 or $4.71, and we're billing our residents $4.11. So every gallon that we have to buy for that interconnect we're losing 50 some cents per thousand gallons, not per, per gallon, per thousand gallons. So our rates are adjusting to that point that we're not losing any additional dollars and um, we have to do it. I don't wanna do it, but it's just something that we have to do. But this is just for introduction purposes. It will be advertised now. And then uh, over the next couple of weeks, Public input will come in and uh, let us know how they feel about the water and sewer rates. And it'll be the same as how we do it. None of us want it. Do we have a motion to introduce Ordinance 5 2023 for introduction purposes? So we got a motion. Any second at all? 
Second, any other discussion for introduction purposes? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. The comment, the comment I would make was the cost of operating our uh, systems has gone up dramatically, uh, especially with income work. And the capital improvements that have to be made to come from those funds, the reduction of the water and sewer rates is a result in a default in our ability to produce water for thousands of people. So it's critical, it's a critical ordinance. I, I, I want to also add my biggest concern with water and sewer in general is that um, I think everyone's going to start seeing more and more about these PFOSs, what they call the forever plastics that uh, can come down the aquifer. It could be coming down from Philadelphia. It could be coming uh, down from uh, Baltimore. It could be coming from the Atlantic Ocean. But these these forever plastics get into your water system, and we've never had to treat for these forever plastics ever. Now there's going to be a new, and I, I still don't know if there's an actual amount that we have to treat it for, or has it came well, a level? Well, number three, the uh, PFAS, some of the chemicals under the PFAS, two, uh, exceed what EPA is recommending. So we're going to we're going to do a pilot study, but we have to find how that's to be done. And once that's done, then the design of the plant will probably end up using what's called granulated activated carbon, which is a more expensive means to uh, eliminate PFAS. But there again will be an additional cost to town just for treatment to eliminate that particular chemical from the uh, Distribution system. And, and lose 100% correct. Not only does it, we have to treat, but currently we're treating with this activated carbon. And my understanding that these carbon filters will last for a period of time. And I've talked to some areas that have done testing on this. They may go through four of these filters per year with their water system. And each of these filters calls quite a few dollars and I don't want to put a dollar amount on it. But then I'm hearing that you can't get rid of the carbon filter in regular waste. No, this becomes a, a nuclear, hazardous, yeah. it yeah. becomes a hazardous or a nuclear byproduct that you have to get rid of in another way. And that's to be determined. So we don't really know what that cost is going to be. And then we were also told at the last, or I was told, that we're going to have to treat our wastewater with possibly the same type of system. So when it goes back into the Elk River, it, it has no PFOSs in it. So it has to be treated from both ends. And uh, I'm, I'm almost at the point, I will tell you, and I'll tell the whole board here, I don't know how we're going to be in the water. It, it may have to come to where you have a professional. Uh, I, I think you need to look at these things a little globally at some times. It might have to be people that are experts in the water and sewer field to handle these. Now, I know we have a competent um, operator of our plant, but I think this is going to get, maybe not today or tomorrow, but I tell you, five to ten years from now, it's going to be... Uh, a challenge for all of us. Okay, I rambled again. There we go. Mr. Stanley, I will let you talk. talk. Speaking of water, I don't know if this is the time to bring it up or not, but uh, I'm living up very good to do a circle for a long period of time. And I sat with this house back in 2003. Uh, as we moved in, my wife started to think about this. There was some type of salt on the food table. And then we made a toilet bowl, and we tried the toilet bowl. Filthy, dirty. And going on for a good while. So I had a summer put in the filter. And every month, since I put it in, it's been seven years ago since I put the filter in. Every month, 
no sense uh, to me. Would you mind if I get Mark Turnbull back involved? I don't mind at all. I was planning on trying to talk to him and without trying to read that story because of what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I got pictures on my phone. Um, the filter that I changed and the filter I put on now told him when I changed it was native and everything on the phone. And have any of your neighbors had the same experience? Yes. yes. I talked to my neighbor next door and he said he had the same problem. There's something, I don't know if it's, if it's a chemical reaction or what. Is, is there a well up there, Lou, or is that being serviced by? Was this a, what's the word? No, Jesse, but we sort of all that water hill. No, they're on it. It's not a well. Uh, they be coming from, from the water tower. Water tower and uh, right up through uh, through more road to the water tower of the pump station. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get involved in it. So I was, I was told by Mark that there were some changes made. I don't know when. They don't, I asked him about how come they don't flush out the water items. He said, we don't flush it out anymore. It's only two years now. So I don't know if it's something building up in the line. Well, well, we'll find out. We'll report back to you. Yeah, if you'd like to see it, yeah, I, 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 I got them all done. Could you share those emails with us on the phone? I would we'll like see to see if we've got That's it. You can't do it. Uh, yeah. it. But I think that would be good if we could get his water tested. Let's take yeah, Mark. And I have my water tested. I don't have any time to Like I said, I called and had the person come up to the plant. I guess I'm off the test it. How many times? How many ways you test it is out of 50 tickets? And I got a different ticket on that thing. And, and the different setup, and they came out the word was fine. But the code. But I said, well, what's wrong with the children down there? I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to And it's coming in with the word it's going into my room. But, you know, it's going through the line of my house. Well, we'll take a look at it and we'll address that for you. So what was Lewis saying? He didn't speak into the mic. And certainly I did not hear him. I was not right here. No, I said, we didn't have to go on water analysis, a sample for analysis, and I don't know anything about it. So I and can't. He just said he couldn't tell my picture of that yeah. one analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Lou, what's Mark, up? Oh, Mark, you can look at it. Yeah, it. well, I'll be in touch with Mark. Yeah. What do we got next, Lou? Ordinance 7, uh, 2003 amends uh, section uh, chapter 804 trash and recyclable. Basically, this was an old ordinance uh, that governed uh, trash collection, and we just updated it. And you, you have a clean copy as well as uh, the introductory copy. And we were just asking the board to uh, uh, adopt this uh, change to the ordinance. 
to upgrade it because it doesn't even define that we pick up recyclables. So all that's been added to this is to find recyclables and trash. Yeah. Things of that nature. So it's a, not a real complicated ordinance, but uh, it does provide in there that we'll put the pre pre resolution and things for that. Okay, we have a motion to accept ordinance 7 2023. Got a motion. We have a second. And any discussion? Hearing not all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. The last thing I have is a confirmation. Uh, Mayor Commissioner of the Town of Elton to the Elton High School alumni. Whereas Elton High School graduated first class in 1959, I was class of 63. Yeah, you told us that 55. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make sure it was a new school when I was there, believe it or not. <laughs> uh, but I also graduated from Gilpin Manor, which is no longer there. Okay, I'm sorry. Elkin High has grown from a small school, 25 classrooms, to a model specialty learning center that educates young men and young women today while preparing them for tomorrow. And whereas over 60 years, thousands of young people have passed through the doors to their, to their pathway to adulthood. Elton High School alumni routinely reunites uh, to connect with those who share that very special time in their lives. Now, therefore, we um, we have the American Commission of the Town of Elton to hereby proclaim welcome home by providing an annual day of reunion for all Elton High School alumni and further stating that uh, the first Friday of October of every year shall be Elton High School alumni day. I would recommend that the board enact this particular resolution for five minutes for including me, the class of 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> class of 60 years. Yeah, but you're the only one left. Yeah, but right. everybody else is gone. <laughs> is it Michael? Rob has stepped out uh, to the restroom. We can make the most of that. He wanted to get back. So we can wait for him. So. <laughs> Yeah, it was a pretty new school when I got there. So, so obviously you went to the middle school too at one time. That was a well, junior high school. Yeah. 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 Uh, motion to accept proclamation uh, for the Elton alumni. Or did we? Uh, uh, so we have a motion. Second. second. And a second. Any discussion on alumni day? Here, not all in favor. Aye. Motion here. I just want to see how it's Class of 75. Oh, here. I was no, class no. of 1979. <laughs> Elk to Bohemia Manor High School. Bohemia Manor. 77, 78, 79. I, 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 yeah, the prop was 77, 78, and 79. All right. Very good. Oh, that's what you were about to say. <laughs> all right. So, what do we got next? Uh, it's on me. I got. Uh, Hey, first and foremost, I wanted to mention that the Elton Fall Fest was a uh, a great hit this year. I thought it was wonderful with as many vendors. I loved everything about it. It was a nice event, and uh, uh, my hat is off uh, to the whole team to put that together. Great job. And I think everyone up here would probably say the same thing that uh, was able to come down and attend. The uh, I think that that's all I have, I know I'm missing something here in front of me, but I think that that's all I have. Earl? Charles? Um, I echo the same comments. I think the Alliance did a great job in spite of many names still sitting there with the um, fence around them. Also want to comment on Rob Mastriano. He played with his uh, band downtown, did a very good job. And certainly, Rob and I presented to everyone, and I guess you know, too, were some people who are elderly asked if there was some type of transportation that can provide, be provided next year in spite of their age and their legs and what have you. I don't know, but then, who you thought? Well, that was And you did a great job. I did have one thing, but Rob, you're next. Um, yeah, I had to uh, re reiterate that. And that was probably the best fall fest ever. It was definitely none better. And the weather was gobbled right in for us. It was a great time. Thank you very much. Uh, every, every month was uh, 
Jean? I'm just bouncing all over the place today. How do you like that? While you're here, did you have a chance to meet with the winner on the funding? Because you have any success or has that not happened? Yes, I understand that the um, town had a staff meeting last week. I don't know if anybody that was in that meeting has an update. So um, we're, I understand we're going to try to get some additional bids as we have to compare them and do an RFP. But right now, that seems that we have the, the grant that we've been granted will be the money that we have to give. Not, not in this line. Another grant cycle will not start until next spring. Mm -hmm. And then the last person I saw was Marjorie coming down to the end of the street about seven o'clock. I think they're a little more cute. Directing traffic. So welcome. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have nothing to compare it to. I've got 24 of them compared to the but. Hey, Lou, I just wanted to touch base on the collective bargaining. That was the other item that I had on my list. Uh, on Friday, you spoke with Whiteford and Taylor. Yes. Can you give us kind of an update on that? Is there anything privileged? To... The, the, they're uh, working on an amendment to the uh, charter. Form. They haven't got to it yet. What they did for our section to formulate uh, the recommendations. So I wanted to mention to the team that was here earlier, and I, I see we have a couple of the members still here, but the uh, on the collective bargaining, I know that uh, it is moving forward. It may seem like it's moving like a snail, but uh, the language is uh, 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 being worked on with Lewis and Wade for Taylor to make a charter change. And then the question is gonna still come out whether this board wants to put it on the referendum or if we're gonna move forward to Accept that charter language change. The complication arises the uh, fact that the National Labor Relations Act uh, that governs a lot of things dealing with uh, organizations and unions think does not pertain to government. So governments essentially have to give that right away, the, con the control that they have over their employees. They have to give that right to employees to form organizations similar to what you did with the Elkton Police SOP. But since the, uh, the actual granting of that to the SOP was different because it was foreign personnel, the ordinance has to be changed uh, to include non-senior personnel. And also the, the uh, council is recommending some changes to how that was done. That's all I can say. Okay, so I just want to let the whole team know if you're watching or listening, we are working on it. I promise you we're working on it. As you can see, it's uh, moving in a direction, but uh, at a snail's pace like everything else that we do, which is okay. Thorough, thoroughness. All right, this is the time we open up the floor for anyone that has anything for the good of the town of Elton or any comments. I'm happy to listen. Anyone have anything to say today? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.